Good afternoon. This is Rose Ruder from Cape Town, South Africa. And this is our afternoon session on prophetic mentoring. It is a public page and you are so welcome to invite friends to join you on this public play page called Rose Ruder Prophetic Mentoring. So we are live now. I'm just waiting for a few more to join. And uh, then we're going to begin to teach and to demonstrate the current day prophetic anointing. So I'll just wait for one or two. I do know I've had some um, <clears throat> people contact me to ask what time and that they're coming online. So I see there are two little, two little pairs of eyes already. And um, yeah, feel free please to share with as many people as you want to. We are living in an end time prophetic um, atmosphere and the prophetic is so exciting and yeah, it's just wonderful. So I'm hoping that your comments will come up on the screen. Yes, I see there's Carwin and so, so welcome Carwin. There's another three people that I see are online as well. Hi Judith. So good to see you and Brenda, lovely to see you. Thank you for checking in for the afternoon prophetic mentoring session. And uh, yes, great expectation, all of us. And uh, tag friends, share with friends, invite friends. It's a public page and so anybody is allowed to join. And it's not necessarily um, that you have to sign up. You just pop in any time when the advert is out that we're having a prophetic afternoon. And then we are ready to roll and see what Papa wants to do. So I'm going to start immediately. I'm going to turn the music down a bit and then I'm going to open in prayer. Hold on. Jesus, you are so worthy of glory, honor, and praise. We want you to know, Lord Jesus, that we are grateful for the giftings that you have given your children, and most of all, the prophetic. We ask that today we'll glean on that anointing and lean into the Holy Spirit. We thank you for each one that is activated by the anointing to walk in the atmosphere of the prophetic. And so, Lord, just quicken it to our spirit today and keep us alive in the area of exhortation, edification, and comfort. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, if not by many, then by few, that's fine. I see there are seven of us at the moment, and we will see how it goes during the session. Um, I know that a lot of you um, have to pay data, so we're not going to make these sessions very long. And uh, yesterday I spoke on um, the prophetic is about hearing God and that we are all called to hear God. And also, uh, hi Lynette Eisenhower, lovely to see you. And also that... Um, that we are living in an end time prophetic atmosphere or prophetic setting where the children of God are hearing God. You don't have to be a prophet to hear God. Um, all of us can hear God. Out of all the gifts, it says earnestly desire to prophesy. And so to prophesy is to speak what you hear in your heart, in your spiritual ears, in the nudging of the Father, through various ways and means. And at the end of yesterday's session, I asked each of you and uh, those that were online to in the next 24 to 48 hours to make it your due diligence to send a prophetic word or a word of encouragement, same thing, as the Holy Spirit prompts you to a friend and so I already had one person contact me and um, she wasn't even on the session at the time, I don't think. I think she watched afterwards. But um, she gave me a wonderful word of encouragement about 
the peace of God. And as I moved up into the upstairs of this house, how God has given me a different vantage point and a different, um, he's added to the anointing. And you see, that's it. You can take the very picture of the person's life and build onto that. And, oh, but then you don't have to know the person at all. God shows you where they've come from and where they're going to. And then we spoke about um, how with the prophetic, it's sometimes just a picture and that we mustn't give more than what the Lord has shown us. And the example was a pair of pink booties and, um, and great jubilation and how the person would give that word saying, I don't know what it's about, but I'm giving it to you. You can test if it's God or not, and if this picture is for you or not. But I see pink booties and celebration. And the person breaks down, this is an example, and says, I am about to become a grandmother to a baby girl, and my daughter has been barren and unable to fall pregnant for X amount of years. And so you see my season correctly. And so that's just a little example of how beautiful the prophetic is. It is amazing. Nice to see you, Joan, from um, Ireland. So great to see you. God bless you. So this is our afternoon session, Joan, teaching a little bit on the prophetic, but most of all, activating God's children to walk in the prophetic. Great to see you, Glenda. And this is our afternoon session in the prophetic. So yesterday when I finished, I did a couple of prophetic words just to show. And um, both the people said it fitted them perfectly. So that was, it's always encouraging. But I want you to know that when you walk in the prophetic on a permanent basis, uh, on a daily basis, you don't run and throw yourself on the bed and say, Lord, I hope that was you. You build up such a confidence knowing that the gift that is inside of you will perform the good deed of the Lord. And uh, it's always edification, confirmation, no, edification, exhortation, and comfort. And so if you're getting words of judgment, it's part of Old Testament prof prophets. And, um, and those that are in high levels of prophetic office that are known throughout the nations, and uh, I would, on the level that we are looking at, I would stay clear away from it. Make sure that your prophetic word is to build people up, uh, to exhort them and to encourage them. And the spirit, Jesus is the spirit of prophecy and prophecy is about the spirit of Jesus. So it always makes Jesus known. But I also want to say, it's not about well, Jesus is walking in the room and he has come to touch us today. I don't mean it like that. Making Jesus known in his, in the blood, in the crucifixion, in his love, in his grace, in his majesty, as the king of, of peace, the prince of peace, as the king of all ages, there is just the tenets of the beauty of Jesus and the life that he died for comes through in the prophetic word. So that was yesterday. And I'm waiting and looking forward to hear in uh, the next 24 hours, those that listened yesterday and have been able to give prophetic word and encouragement to others because we activated the gift. We said, anybody that wants to be used in the prophetic, to hold out their hands and allow them to activate them in the prophetic. So before I go on, I know there are some new people online this afternoon and uh, you uh, weren't necessarily able to, to receive yesterday. So I'm just going to take a little sidestep and say if you online for the first time today um, in this flow of teaching that we're doing on the prophetic then and you want the Lord to bless you he says 
You can desire all spiritual gifts, particularly to prophesy. And so if you're saying, yes, Lord, I want to be used in this beautiful gift of the prophetic, which is word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits and the prophetic unction, then I want you just where you are this afternoon to put your hand be up before the Lord, just in a place of surrender. And if you're in a public place and you can't, uh, just leave your hands open in your lap and let me pray. Father, I thank you right now, right now, for the unction of the Holy Spirit. Father, you see the hands and the hearts of those that are looking for you to uh, empower them with the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy. I ask you, Father, to unlock that gift inside of them. I thank you, Father, that not only the prophetic that brings exhortation, edification and comfort, but they also will operate in the word of knowledge. They will have supernatural understanding of, of a situation because you will unlock it. And also um, word of wisdom, that they'll know when to release that word and when to hold it back. I also thank you, Father, that they can operate in discerning whether angelic beings are coming and going from, that, from the heavens like Jacob did, or whether they will be aware that there are some troublers hanging around in the spirit and to be able to close the door. So I thank you for that anointing now. Prophetic flow, prophetic flow, prophetic flow, prophetic flow. A new stream, a new opening in the spirit. Father, your word says, I long to come and lay hands on you. And so this is not laying hands unto leadership. This is laying hands unto gifting. And Father, today I invest in each of those that are design, desiring to move in the prophetic. And even um, through the internet or through the online, I release this gift and all the call, all the call of that that is locked up but now released in the area of prophetic in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Just receive, just receive. Rabashanda yende, utorondi yanda. Thank you, Father. I see uh, lightning bolts, lightning bolts, lightning bolts, movement in the spirit as the anointing, anointing is coming down, coming down, quickening you. And the Lord says to you today, my sons and my daughters, those things that you have been experiencing and feeling, and you have been feeling this, this unction that you want to share and speak, and, but you're so scared that it's your own imagination. And Father says, no, it's not. I am leading you, guiding you, speaking to you. Open your mouth and I will fill it with a good report. Do not despise the day of small beginnings, for it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. To the degree that you walk in the spirit, so the increase will come. Be faithful with the little, I'll make you faithful with much, says the Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we're all on the same page. We have asked the Lord to release a fresh flow and... Uh, a new flow for those that need a new flow. And then I said yesterday that today we're going to speak on what to prophesy and what not to prophesy. So very clearly in both these sessions, I have really emphasized that we only prophesy exhortation, edification and comfort. All right. Now, the things that you need to be careful of because it would have to be 100% God. And so in the gift and the atmosphere of a prophetic meeting or prophetic gathering, I want to say to you, try and steer clear of this. Judith Jacobs says, Amen. Wow, I felt it. Great. It's yours. The gift of God is yours. How wonderful. Uh, afternoon, Heidi. And a Joyce Witboy, good afternoon. And Edwina Collar, good afternoon. And so we're speaking on the potholes 
of the prophetic that we need to be careful and maybe even steer clear of. Good day, Erica. Do not prophesy dates, mates, boats, or babies. And I will explain this. Do not prophesy that on the 10th of November, 2021, there will be a tsunami. The times and seasons belong to the Lord. And I would say you would have to be quite seasoned prophet to walk in that kind of dimension. And so... Uh, and if it doesn't come to pass, then that person starts to lose confidence in the word of the Lord. No mates. And so, hi, Gillian, lovely to have you. And then no mates means, do not prophesy that your friend Sally is going to marry Steve. For the rest of her young days, she's going to fall in love with a couple of um of, uh, of options, people that are options, but she is going to be bound because you, off the top of your head, said that her husband's name will be Steve and it will cause a lot of confusion. So no dates on the 10th of October 2021 and no mates, so-and-so is marrying so-and-so. There needs to be a spark, they need to fall in love. The Lord needs to speak to them first and a prophetic would bring a confirmation, but never a revelation on marriage partners. Uh, no dates, no mates, no boats. That means do not say God's going to give you a mansion in the Bahamas and a jet ski to use when you're on holiday in Hawaii. The character of our father is to bless us and to bring us into increase, but stay away from material blessing. I believe that the prophetic is excellent in building people up in the, the love of God, the joy of the Lord, um, the bigness of God. And um, the last one is no dates, no mates, no boats, no babies. Many times when women are um, hygiene, uh, many times when people are um, from barren circumstances and then you say by this time next year you're going to have a baby what if you're wrong and so these are those sticky points that I might still hint around it and I now I'm able to say after many years nearly 40 years in the prophetic I will say within the next three months you will see such and such a change but um, leave the dates and the mates and the boats and the babies to the office of the prophet. Not operate in it in the gift of the prophet. So I hope that this um, really helps you. And then, So that is what to prophesy and what not to prophesy. So yesterday we looked at the whole desiring of prophecy. And again, when we open today, we've, um, we've invited the Holy Spirit to give us the gift of prophecy. We have as homework asking you from yesterday and again today to encourage somebody with a word of encouragement. Oh, we also demonstrated how you move from being... Um, a priest that prays from the earth to God and a prophet that sits in the heavenlies and releases to the earth. So we'll do it. I'll do it an example again so that those that are new catch up. And uh, it's like this. I decide I'm going to pray for Maggie, Chetty. So I my, if I'm going to pray over her, I'm going to say, Father God, I thank you for Maggie Chetty. I bring her before you this afternoon and I ask you to bless her. Father, in the area that she's battling, that she has uh, said she's battling with her back, her spine, and she's battling uh, to break through into a new realm. That's prayer. And the priest does that. A priest and a shepherd prays for the people. And they put their shoulder under the weight, the burden, and they stand 
before the Lord with that burden. And even intercessors, straight intercessors, they pick up the burden of a nation and they pray and they say, forgive our sin. They become one with the sin that is sticking in a nation. But the prophet and the apostle comes up, come up here where I am, that I may show you things that are great and mighty that you've never seen before. So now instead of going, Maggie, Chetty, I'm going to pray for you. I say, no, hang on. I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to actually declare and decree and prophesy what the Father is saying. So then I say, Maggie, hang on. I want to change this. So I'm going to rather prophesy over you. And then it goes like this. Father, I thank you right now for Maggie Shetty. I thank you, Lord, for who she is. And the Lord would say to you this afternoon, my daughter, that he is coming to heal your back. And he is putting a rod of steel in your back, for this is not just a natural um, symptom. This is an indication that you have, are carrying loads that you shouldn't be carrying. And there have been words spoken over you that has been giving you even a pain, a pain in your neck. And the Lord says today, I cancel every word of reproach, every word of accusation. Every tongue that rises in judgment against you comes down right now in Jesus' name. No longer will you feel bent under the load, but you will lift up your head and look unto the Lord. And that place that you feel that you cannot break through, the Lord says today, I'm giving you new and fresh momentum, new and fresh anointing. You will not lag behind nor run ahead. You'll be exactly on time for I am your God and I am pacing you. And so know my beautiful daughter Maggie, that my hand is upon you. I delight over you. I sing a new song over you and you will see that the burden that you have been, um, been um, hanging under like a heavy cloud right now moves out of the way. I thank you for divine light. I thank you for a lightness. I thank you Father. I break off every word of accusation. I thank you for an excellent report and I thank you for an acceleration in a life, in a walk, and in a call, right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You see the difference? And once you open your mouth, and you work with the word that God gave, because it's a word of prophecy, it's not an epistle, it's not a book with chapters and verses, it's a word. And so the word that was emphasized to me for Maggie was that he was going to deal with what was going on in her body and that the root of it was people's words and that he is breaking it up and he is setting her free and she will rise up in a new dimension and she will run and not be weary. And that's the word for you, Maggie. That started as a demonstration, but it is the word of the Lord. And I pray that it fits you and fits you well. So there you have now an example of how to, when somebody says, please, can you pray for me? And they're there, not on the phone, or even on the phone, but what I'm saying is they want you to pray there and then. Okay. That's when you start to, in the spirit, your radar is on. And you go towards the person and you're ready to start to release by faith. Prophecy is released by faith and to the measure of faith that you release it, it will grow and multiply. And so um, as you go towards them, the Lord may just nudge you and say resistance. Not resistance on the person, to resistance toward the person. And then you just launch with that little piece. Father says, right now, that resistance moves out of the way because God is a God of blessing. God is a God of breakthrough. His plan is to prosper you and not to harm you. And I see the Lord pulling down um, the stronghold. In fact, I see that you've been in a cardboard box you feel like you've been in a cardboard box and you're beating the air. And the Father says, I am dismantling the box that you will run 
in a place of freedom. If that word fits you this afternoon, you say, yes, Lord, that's mine. And you grab hold of it. So I hope that that is helpful to you. When I was first used in the prophetic, I didn't become prophetic because I did a prophetic school. I was a little Baptist girl and I started hearing the Lord and releasing stuff. And um, and what was I going to say about it? Um, goodness me. Um, I've forgotten. But I do know that I prophesied just what I heard. I didn't add to it. I didn't know how to decipher it. But once I understood, uh, once I saw the tears on the faces and I just launched out with a word, with a word. Hi, Jill Wilmot. And so the more you go with that word, it will tumble out. It, you don't hear it here. You hear it there. It comes straight from the spirit. There's just like butterfly and a quickening. And that is how, and Elizabeth Berta says, she's been in the box for a long time and she's released today. Thank you, Father. Thank you that this was a now word for Elizabeth. And I pray right now, Lord, that this word will be bound, uh, uh, wrapped around her. She will never lose it. She will remember this day and she will never shrink back. She's out of the box and she's walking in a place of freedom from this moment forth in Jesus' name. And then the next point I'm going to teach today and then we're going to do something more practical is um, what I call the four D's. How the prophetic word has a progression. Hi, Katie, lovely to see you. So let me put my book down here. So the prophetic, um, the prophetic um, development. So the first D, four Ds, four Ds. The first D is declaration. So I've declared a prophetic word over a few of you today, okay? Oh, that's, thank you so much, Heidi. Yes, I didn't go to a prophetic school to become a prophet. It was a gift from God. And I had it from a little girl. More in the area of discernment. I could discern sadness and I could discern happiness and I could even discern danger. And one just thinks it's your personality. And then... I started to prophesy in little meetings and places like that. And, uh, and then I found myself hanging out with others that were prophetic. And so that is how it is developed by use. If you prophesy, and when I'm on a prophetic role, ro uh, role and I'm in another nation, everybody I look at, God starts, just starts to give it. And uh, so the prophetic is more caught than taught. I can give you pointers, but today as I prayed and the Holy Spirit downloaded to you that that he has promised, that if you earnestly desire spiritual gifts, particularly the prophetic, that he will give it to you. Okay, uh, so the four Ds. Declaration. That's what we've just done. I, I declare over you, God says, that's a declaration. Okay? Uh, the second one is um, despair. Despair. You get a prophetic word, and when you look again, everything that that word says is coming to pass, is not coming to pass, and in fact is the opposite. The third D is development. You say, God, I have tried everything. I have tried everything. And it's like either the prophet 
got a word and said it was for me, but it was certainly for the person next, next to me. They must have missed it. Or I don't understand because I have now been set up for this great disappointment because it's not happening. Then after this despair or distress, that's a better word. First declaration, then distress. Third one is development. You get this prophetic word, you tell your whole family, you tell your neighbors, you tell your kids, you write it in your journal, and then you go into a season of total distress because it never comes to pass or it's taken forever. And in fact, where you thought you're going to prosper, you lose your job and you're in such distress and you go to the Lord and you say, I just give it back to you. I just don't understand it. And he brings you to the third D, which is development. That you're not just somebody with a promise, but you become the promise through his development. If I prophesy over you today and I say, um, Linda and Cheryl, Linda Hapgood and her sister Cheryl, and I prophesying over the two of you. And I say, I want you to know that as the family of God and as sisters, God is going to use the two of you in a healing anointing. And I see the Lord using you to bring healing to marriages and healing. Well, first of all, it's healing to women in the area of marriage failure, in the area of abuse, in the area of um, even demonic um, strongholds that are coming against women, gender hatred. And, and I prophesy that and I say, Linda and Cheryl, you have been sent where you are for a purpose. And it's not just for you to heal, but God is taking you through, developing you so that you will declare and minister in this area. And then I say, right, to these two sisters, I don't even know if they're on today. They were on this morning. But I will tell them to check in to the prophetic word um, on this afternoon session. And uh, that God wants to use them together. And if I was there now with them, I would anoint both of them with oil. And the word would be together but separate. Together but separate together but separate that they are uniquely separate in their personality but they are together in a gift and calling and only God can work it out isn't that marvelous and so that's how I'm trying to demonstrate to you the first level is that you receive a prophetic word or give a prophetic word and it is called declaration the second um, part of it is distress because it's taking time to come to pass and then and, and and the lord says i want you to remind me of my promises not because he has a forgettery but he wants you to align yourself with him in that promise his promises are yours and you have to align yourself with the promises of god and say lord i remind you I remind you that you told so many, told me so many times through so many various ways that you are my door opener and that the tickets for nations will come in so quickly that I'll hardly have time to pack my case. And I call in that prophetic promise today in Jesus' name. That's how you align yourself with the promise of God. So now there's a declaration, then there's the distress, and the and then you say, I can't take it anymore. You give it back to God. Uh, after you've done this incredible warfare over this promise, and when is it ever going to happen? And then the Lord says, come, my child, let me develop you. Let me develop you so that you can walk with great confidence and assurance that this gift is my gift on you. And then, as you grow through faith, much use, um, spending time listening and then releasing it, 
The fourth D is demonstration. And so there's declaration and demonstration. The word is declared, not who you are, but who you are becoming. And then the demonstration is when the work of distress and development, having had its full work in us and brought us to a place of even maturity, we become a demonstration of the love of God and we walk fully in that prophetic call. Isn't that beautiful? Tomorrow we'll look at the protocol of how we use the prophetic within uh, public meetings, etc., etc. But for the rest of this time that we have, I want to demonstrate for you how you can use things in the prophetic. And for me, it is art. And so I am going to... Uh, Brenda Hutton says, Some prophetic words have taken 10, 18, and 25 years in my life. And that is so true. And yet now, now it's like, uh, Magilly, yesterday's one will still be up on the prophetic mentoring group. You can go and look at it. Um, um, and yet, we have entered in a season now of acceleration, acceleration, and the shortening of days for the sake of the elect, and also the prophetic and the apostolic together. You have the promise, and then you have the governance of God. And some of the things that are prophesied now are coming to pass very quickly, very quickly. Right, so I'm going to do some uh, demonstration of how to use uh uh, I'm going to use art. So I'm going to start with this one. And uh, you can see I've painted the poppies at the bottom. Quite a lot of light reflecting on those poppies. And then the next part of the painting are the sunflowers. Okay. Okay. And so if what happens is I paint a painting uh, by the Holy Spirit. And then I step back, I don't draw, I take a brush on a blank canvas and I first of all cover the whole canvas with a neutral colour. And then I will decide, oh, I'm going to do some sunflowers. So now my first thing was I'm going to do the whole thing with sunflowers. And then I go, no, I don't want to. So I do here and I go, I think I'm going to have a pop of colour by putting the poppies here. And then when I finish, I stand back. And like, look at the light on those poppies. I stand back and I go, my goodness, Lord, this is only you. For I do not have this ability. It's not about ability, it's about your gift. Because ability, I don't have. I've done no art training and I don't have the ability. But I now have a gift of prophetic art. Now, for somebody that's not prophetic, uh, they might say, well, I don't know. It's just a picture of flowers, but I can tell you what it means. And if you are what, this person that I'm going to prophesy now, you're allowed to grab this word. Okay, so this picture is a demonstration that you've come through a season of loss. It can be a physical loss of a loved one, of a family member, or health, or finance. But poppies represent loss and newness of life. It's very interesting that in America, where all the soldiers were buried after the big war, and I think it was America, or could have even been in, in Britain after um, um, Never, Never, Never Give Up, the, um, the general uh, just slipped my mind. But after they, no, it's America, after they had buried all the soldiers, and it was just mounds of sand. Within a little while, that whole field of bodies was just red poppies. And that's how we, why we have Poppy Day. Okay. So here we go. There's been a loss. And there's been a dying of self. But the Lord would say, out of the ashes and out of death will come fresh and new life. 
and that you are a seed carrier that will multiply and bring people into revelation and into a place of great healing. And in your new season, you will no longer be the poppy, but you will be the sunflower. And sunflowers speak of incredible life, and they always face the sun. For us, it's the S-O-N. When the sun goes down, they face one another, and they get strength from one another. And when the sun comes out, they turn their faces towards the Lord. And so Father says, you are in a, on a journey from loss to newness of life. Do not keep looking back. Know that the blood of Jesus has availed for you. And out of this place of crushing, new seeds will fall and you will come into a new dimension. What do you think about that, girls and guys? What do you think about that? That is how you can take a painting like that and you can use it as a prophetic demonstration and it will speak to that person. So then I paint the painting and I put it up on my art page and then when the person buys it, I will go before the Lord and say, right, this painting is going to its forever home. What is the word for that person on this painting? Isn't that amazing? How great is God? I think everybody thinks that the prophecy is just, thus says the Lord, Thou art my good and faithful servant. No, God speaks through many, many ways. And you will never look at a poppy or a sunflower in the same light again. Now that's that one. Now the other day, on, from Friday, Saturday and a little, and m most of Sunday, um, I want you to know that I painted six paintings. My body was sore. But I couldn't stop. I just was so enjoying it. I was just loving it. And it just kept flowing like you would worship. I'm lost when I'm painting. It's such a release. So this little painting here. And, uh, and as I say, you grab the word if it fits you. If this painting appeals, applies to your situation. So when I look at this painting... I would say this about this painting. Well, first of all, have a look at the roses. Just look at the roses. I can't paint roses. And as I am just fiddling around on these little blooms, I stand back and I go, my goodness, my goodness, my gracious goodness. <laughs> Only Lord could, uh, the Lord could have done this. Just grabbing my glasses. Only the Lord could have done this. And like a child, I run downstairs or upstairs. I say, guys, look at this. Look at this. It actually looks like a rose. Look at I, I, I said, I am so excited. I'm delighted. I can't wait to go and finish all these roses. Okay. So now if I look at this painting, look at the frailty of the container. Look at the delicate stems. And my word to on this painting right now off the top of my head would be, my hand is upon you, my little one. You are like a dove in the top of the trees. I hear you not only when you sing, but even when you are silent. For your cry goes out to me day and night. I want you to know that nothing is hidden from me. Not even your foundation. For you have walked in a place of transparency and a place of vulnerability. And even as the very source of your existence is visible, to those around you, 
that you are planted in me, in me, and your sustenance comes from me. I do not want you to copy the gifts and callings of others. Don't look for me in the thunder or the lightning. For I have called you with a gentle spirit. Does my word not say it's the gentleness of God that breaks the bone? As you turn your face towards me, you release the gentle fragrance of a life of devotion. I love you endlessly. No longer will you, be, will you feel crushed underfoot, but you will be one that displays my gentleness and my glory, says the Lord. So Father, I thank you for that word. And I thank you that whoever that word fits, that they just grab hold of it. Look at the delicate and the transparency of that vase. It's just a thin glass vase. And look how the buds are thriving. And if we don't look at the vase, if we covered this and made it a thick vase, like a pottery vase, everybody will go, what a life of flourishing. But this speaks about transparency and vulnerability. And these roses know their source. God can also use you in the prophetic, in prophetic demonstration, in many things, from the turban on your head to a demonstration with sunglasses, like we did the other day and we had the word about seeing dimly and then we'll see face to face. People remember the demonstrated word very nicely. This little painting, very plain, in a clay pot, very ordinary, but begun to bloom, begun to bloom. And when I stood back after painting this painting this weekend, I felt the Lord say, I have brought you into a season of maturity. Your call, you are not concerned about your call being pretty. You have moved way away from the place called nice to a place of significance. I have led you a line by line, precept by precept in the things of my word. Your pot may be clay, but inside of you is pure gold. You have been tried in the furnace of the earth. Not everybody will seek you out, but those that do will be so blessed by your wisdom. For I have called you to be an advised counselor and you will walk in a, a counseling ministry. Not a counseling ministry that you learnt in a book, but in a prophetic unction that you will release word of knowledge and word of wisdom over prophetic coffee. You are grounded in me. You are mature. You will not be pushed back. Thank you, Father. And so, that little painting captures your heart. That word, sorry, captures your heart. Take it. I've got one more to go. One more. This is the last one. It's a nice size canvas. This painting, to me, First of all, speaks of the fact 
that this person feels uprooted, not in a pot, uprooted, but not uprooted in a place of feeling devastated, but uprooted and released out of a place of confinement. For purple speaks of royalty and the apostolic and one that leads. And the Lord says to this person that just resonates with this picture. The Lord says, many years of sorrow, many years of buffeting, many years of pushing through whether it was a good season or a bad season. You are the hardiest of plants. But you release the be most beautiful fragrance and you have all kinds of um, anointings inside of you. Even as lavender is used to, in massage and in oils, in all kinds of ways, I want you to know, my precious one, that it's been through crushing that the fragrance has been released. But the season of crushing is over now. And many will seek you out. It can be a man or a woman. Many will seek you out. Your cry in year three and year five and year seven was, notice I'm doing time frames, but because I am already walking in that a long time. Year three, year five and year seven, you cried out and you said to me, how much longer, Father? Surely it is done. And the Lord says, it is now done. This is your season of demonstration. This is your season of divine display. This is a season of, ma of a mature anointing. This is a season of crossing out of a prophetic flow into an apostolic flow. I really feel this is for a man, even though it's, a, 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 you know, uh, it can apply to male and female, but I, 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 and I don't have gender issues for the apostolic, but I feel like there's a man that's looking today and he's saying, I have battled and there's been years that I thought, hey, did I make the right choice? And there've been years that I've moved forward, but there've been years that I've been pushed back. And uh, I feel like I, my crop has failed. And you know, that's very interesting about lavender, ducks, geese, Turkeys, mallards, no, not mallards, um, muscovies, these are all what we have. Roosters, chickens, they don't eat lavender. It's something that we can grow because it will not be devoured by the birds of the air. And that's what the apostle is about. No longer entertained by the skirmishes of the enemy. And the enemy will not eat away of your royal anointing and your royal call, says the Lord. Wow, I want you to know that I never had that uh, interpretation of this painting to, uh, uh, in that form at all on other occasions that I have used this painting. Uh, it's a very, very powerful word. A very, very powerful word. Imagine this printed on a top. That would be very cool. So yeah, we see what Father wants to do. So today, in the next 24 hours, if it's possible, and if not, just write it down somewhere. So I see Cheryl Harris is on. And was Linda on as well, Cheryl? Because that prophetic word was for the two of you. And uh, you can always go back and listen about the call on the two of you together. Um, so as a little homework, between now and tomorrow afternoon, if I do it tomorrow, I'm thinking I am, uh, but I will put out the advert. I want you to take out a sketch pad and ask the Holy Spirit to let you sketch something or take out some paints. And just put color 
Just put colour onto a canvas. Anything. Anything. The Lord will show you. The Lord will show you. On the 1st of September for Spring Day, I did that little canvas. Very easy to put little petals and a centre. And then I did this little one. Is it the right way around? Yeah. Also, Spring Day. Yeah. And this one. Right, so I'm not going to unpack everything. I've got paintings in every room of the house, standing, waiting for whoever's home they're going to. And I really hope that the Lord has touched you this afternoon and that you will embrace this call to the prophetic unction of God and that you will grow. And it's the most gracious gift. And it's wonderful. It's wonderful to be used of God to exhort, encourage, and build people up. So, Father, I thank you for this afternoon's teaching on the tenets, the ups and the downs of the prophetic. I pray for each and every one that has come online that they have received a release and a desire and a yearning to be used in the prophetic anointing. I pray, Father, that they will find time to encourage a family member or a friend, anybody, with a word of encouragement. Even if it's just to say, that God loves you and knows about you. And then, Father, that also they will just get a moment to put some color on paper and just allow you to flow through that gift. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. I will see you on Rosemary Roder, um Facebook page at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. God willing. All's well. I will be there. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming online for this afternoon session. Goodbye for now.